But I think maybe the one that I took the most offense to was they were like, Jamie, it was like, I hate everything about Jamie down to his stupid f-ing sunglasses. And they're my own prescription <laughs> sunglasses. used to hook up secretly. Secretly? That's cool. That's actually really hot. I don't tell anybody in school about this. Like I talk to anyone at school. I'm never lonely when I'm with you. Tell me why this has to be this heavy. You try to act like you're friends. But you know you're not that kind of person. Just kiss me. I feel like I'm walking around trying on a hundred different versions of myself. And how do you know what you want? Most of the time, I don't have a clue. You must know what you feel. Do your friends know about us? No. I feel like everything's changed. You don't want to touch me, but you get to dictate who else does. They don't really think that's what's going on here. What is it, then? I did used to think that I could read your mind at times. I don't know, maybe that's normal. It's not. Desmond and Fionn, it's lovely to chat to you today. Thank you for taking the time to join our Normal People special. Uh, first of all, congratulations uh, on the show. Um, it's it's bonkers. Everything is bonkers at the moment uh, in the world, but also the reaction to the show. Can you uh, explain what is happening? Because uh, the reaction has just been insane. Yeah, it's 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 mad. It is a. It's really it's really surreal i think that like um like it's such a nice thing because everyone puts so much into it and you know really put their hearts and souls into the show so to have people react in this way and you know i think that we all feel like we're we're dreaming because like the reaction couldn't have been um better which is yeah it's 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 amazing um but yeah it's but it's funny as well because like you see all this stuff online and you hear all these amazing things but then you just wake up and you're still in quarantine, um, wearing the same um, clothes you've been wearing for the last two months. So uh, yeah, it's really surreal, but amazing. Uh, but that is a lovely jumper to be wearing. If you're going to be wearing something for two months, you know that's that's a great jumper to be wearing. Well, that, that's that's very kind. I feel like I'm only uh, like perpetuating people's idea of me from Jamie by wearing AirPods as well. So I think maybe that was a <laughs> what a break. Choice. What a break. Well, if it's any consolation, Desmond, you uh, you're wearing AirPods as well. So it turns out yeah, Nail yeah. isn't as sound as everybody thinks. <laughs> um, yeah. no well first of all a bit a bit of background uh on your characters because you're kind of the new version of love hate, not necessarily the TV show, but the fact that everybody loves you, uh, Desmond, and everybody hates you. Fionn, sorry to to, to put it like that, but the reaction to each of your characters. Um, so, would you mind just um, for a bit of context describing each other's characters, Desmond? Would you be able to describe uh, Fionn's and your take on him? Uh, well, I think um, Jamie, I guess. He wouldn't have the best reputation. He's quite a forthright and um, outspoken individual who is very strong towards his own viewpoint and stuff. And he's not the nicest to other people, I guess. Well, that's one one way of describing him. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Fiona, how would you describe Niall? I describe Niall as um, I think I think this is maybe I think people have said this online, but he's like the epitome of sound. Like he is just such a lovely caring um kind of happy go lucky guy and is um like a like a like a, such a lovely friend to to Connell uh as well um well, yeah that's probably how I, I describe him and can you remember the first day that you two actually met I don't know whether it was a table read or an audition or, or when that was we met at the first table read set. oh was it oh was the table read was it yeah at the table read and I didn't know you that well at that point <clears throat> And going by your reading, which was so strong as the character, Jamie, I was like, maybe Fionn is an asshole. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, the more we spend time together, it's the complete opposite. Um, but yeah, I think our first real you right. know, getting to know each other was probably that day in Trinity at the uh, Skulls. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's funny because it, it also, I think that like, 
yeah, that was probably the first day we got to know each other properly. And then um, obviously filming in Italy, we were mm. together 24 seven. So that was when um, we got much closer again, I think is probably, that's probably fair to say. But um, but yeah, it would have been, yeah, it's funny. Cause yeah, cause I remember just being in Trinity on the like cricket crease mm. where the, uh, the PAV is, just being like, this is so surreal that we're even here and, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, that was probably first time we met. Mm-hmm. Table read, but then got to know each other better and better as it as it went on. Yeah, I actually saw an article there that uh, the, the the villa that you stayed in or that you were filming in in uh, in the show is actually up on Airbnb Airbnb now, so you can actually go and stay there. Just in case you two ever, you know, you feel like you're missing it too much, you can go and stay there. <clears throat> it looked incredible. <clears throat> yeah, it, it was. It was. It was yeah. stunning. Um, it's actually uh, really cheap, though, isn't it? <laughs> have you been looking yeah. it up this morning you're like as yeah. soon as I'm out of quarantine and going back there yeah for like five people I think it's like 35 euro a night or something so yeah that's incredible sign us up yeah, definitely we'll back what was that like filming uh, abroad as well because I saw the TV show before reading the book uh, so I didn't know no idea where it was going as I was watching it all and uh, yeah whenever it got to, to Italy um, there's a lot of key moments there but, but what was that entire experience like kind of packing up the production and, and heading abroad when we were still allowed to do that kind of thing. Yeah, it was a, it was dreamlike. It was, it was very surreal. Um, you know, you kind of had to take a moment and pinch yourself and, you know, appreciate the opportunity that you had. Um, you know, it was really the icing on the cake because it was the last thing we essentially filmed in the main production. Um, mm-hmm. I think they did a couple of reshoots and stuff, but, um, you know, to go out there to spend time with everyone, it was just a dream come true, really. You can't really get much better than that, to be honest, I don't think, for me. Yeah, yeah, I, co- I completely agree. It was, it was, um, it was funny because I think that there was like, it, it was like a split that like the Sligo people got to go to Sligo and the Trinity people got to go to Italy, which was uh, maybe a slightly <laughs> unfair uh, split. But, uh, but yes, we, we felt so lucky. Well, it's funny because like throughout the shoot, like everyone would be like, oh my God, Italy's going to be so amazing. And then it just completely exceeded all expectation of that even because like we got there and saw the villa on the first day, didn't we, Des? was the first day mm. we yeah. saw it. And we just couldn't believe that we were going to be spending so much time there. Yeah, it was, but like you said, it was the icing on the cake as well to wrap, um, mm. to wrap there. It was also the- well, that's um, where the whole thing finished, right? Mm. Everyone also got on so well with one another. So it was in very many respects, just like a holiday. Like, you know, I think we were all having the time of our lives basically every day. It was just so much fun. And did you get much time to to kind of relax while you were out there as well? Because obviously, as we said, there are some key scenes in terms of the story uh, that take place out there uh, and some uh, like big emotional uh, scenes as well. But um yeah, did you get to actually put the feet up a bit and kind of enjoy yourselves while you were there? We had too much fun, Owen. We can't go into details, but... Uh, <laughs> That's we, for we another conversation. A, <laughs> we had a good time. Okay, we we got good. to go. We got to go. <laughs> that sounds uh, so much more damning <laughs> than is actually the case. <laughs> we um, we got to go to Rome on... Um, we got to go to Rome for... It was two days, right? Uh, we got there Saturday night. Didn't we? Yeah. And then we had all of Sunday, I think. Yeah. Oh, but we, we had to go home on Sunday, right? So we did have probably less yeah. than 24 hours. So we um, we stayed like well beyond our means in an Airbnb <laughs> uh, next to the um, next to the Coliseum. Uh, but because um, even when we got there, the, the host, <clears throat> who was um, so lovely, like we like walked up and she saw us coming. She's like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" <laughs> because uh, it was just all these young, like I don't think I don't know what she uh, expected, but it definitely wasn't um, five uh, <laughs> of us. But um, but yeah, it was. I mean, like it was so nice to do that. But I think most of the crew uh, went to Rome. I think pretty much everyone went mm-hmm. to Rome for the day, which was which was amazing and um, kind of put like everyone was in such high spirits anyway. And so going into the final week, that was like exactly what everyone needed to give them an extra boost um <clears throat> yeah sure you can release all those italian memories in your uh, in your memoirs then uh you know later down <laughs> the line then that's fine um in terms of the film and process obviously you said that italy was was a real highlight and the fact that you were able to rap there is incredible but along the way 
for your own characters? Was there a particular kind of standout moment that you enjoyed uh, doing, Des, um, you know, uh, earlier in the series or, or throughout? Um, real standout moments for me were actually the two read-throughs <clears throat> because they were completely worlds apart. The first one, there was so many people in the room, so many heads of production and BBC. There was so much energy and excitement. And then the second read-through was with Hetty MacDonald and uh, Catherine McGee and just the actors. And uh, it was really intimate and really powerful. And I'll never forget Paul was kind of doing his counselling scenes. And, uh, you know, that's a moment that really stands out for me. It was just really powerful. Um, and then getting to work with Lenny, I guess, was just pretty surreal, you know, being an admirer of his and stuff to actually, you know, spend time. That was that was another kind of pinch yourself moment, you know. So, but it was all just, it's hard to differentiate because every day and every minute was kind of just a pure joy, I guess. Yeah, whenever you're talking about it there, you can see yourself like looking wistfully off into the middle <laughs> distance with like a little a little smile just appears in your face as you're remembering it. Um, Fionn, what about yourself in terms of your your own character, like kind of any standout scenes for yourself that, that were, uh, I, you know, good to film? Yeah, I think that like, I think that it, it's hard to pick one because um, cause Lenny directed the first six and then Hetty the second and, um, and, and, um, Susie and Kate, different DPs on each as well. So I think that I could, I, I think you, it's hard to compare those. So from, from each, I'd say, um, I'd say probably in the first block, maybe the scene with um, where it's uh, Peggy's talking about Marianne annihilating someone and it's with Gareth. And that was just really fun because everyone was so brilliant. And then Seb is so much fun as well. So, uh, so that was really uh, fun. And then, probably the dinner table in Italy um mm. just because that was such um it, it was also such a kind of um mammoth scene um that uh you know we were doing it for for a few days and it was just really kind of creatively satisfying as well as, as having mm. loads of fun I think yeah I think you as you mentioned uh the counseling scene that that Paul goes mm. through and again you know like pretty much the rest of the world um no offense Des, I wasn't actually aware of your work before normal people um Fiona I'm a big fan of of handsome devil um oh, and you. as well as that you're actually the spitting image of one of my cousins so everyone keeps telling him you look like that <laughs> devil as well so I feel like we're related in some way but okay. um I think I think that uh everyone is going to be talking about that counselling scene whenever, they, whenever they've had a chance to watch it through um, mm. because it really gives Paul a chance to, to show off uh, what he's capable of um, just mm. with the camera trained on him and, and focused for mm. so long. Um, in terms of the whole series, as I said, anything goes in this. Um, are there other kind of key moments you think uh, towards the end that people are going to be... Uh, I know the ending is already kind of not dividing people, but people have a lot to say about it. Like, what, what's your take on the ending of the actual series? It was like, I, I was certainly in tears. It was just a really powerful moment, especially, you know, given, you know, what you've went through with these two characters. You know, I thought the end was so beautiful and it kind of leaves it open, I guess, um, which is a great way to finish it, I think, in these characters' lives, you know you're still very much invested in them and wondering what's next. So, um, you know, I thought it was a great ending and it was, it was a really standout, powerful moment. Yeah. I, I think I, I, I completely agree with Des. I, I thought it was, I thought it was gorgeous and I thought it was so expertly done. And, um, and then I guess another uh, scene that stood out to me towards the end is that scene with the ice lollies in um, Connell's oh, bedroom. Yeah. I think that that's just so uh, incredible from everyone involved and, and mm. Paul and Daisy are just so brilliant in it and um, that was another one that that stood out uh, yeah for me in episode 11. I saw a funny thing on Twitter with that and it was like a meme and it was if someone told me they were going out to the ice cream van and they brought back a rocket <laughs> as opposed to a 99 with a flake <laughs> I'd be furious uh, <laughs> that was quite funny but it's very tricky to fill them um, with 99s, I guess. The continuity yeah. issues with the 99 are a lot trickier, yeah, all right? Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's one of the most controversial issues, I suppose, is uh, do you call it an ice pop or an ice lolly? Now, Fionn, you went for ice lolly there, but I'm an ice pop man myself. I, oh, really? That's a good... You've actually... I Now I don't know if I do... I know I called it there that... I, or I called it an ice lolly 
there. I don't know. I think it depends on the actual. I think I'd call a twister an ice pop. Yeah, so I've never agree. heard of ice pop before. I didn't. That's not what? in my dictionary. Yeah, at all. Pop? You're only up the road from me. <laughs> yeah, that's, give me an ice pop. No, not not for me. I'm ice lolly through and through. Ice lolly all the way, or a ninety nine if you uh, if you can get it. Um, yeah. I know we were talking about uh, the the just the bonkers reaction to the show, um, and you said you all got on very well. Have you used uh, been in touch with Paul Daisy? India, the others, is there like a one, is there like a normal people WhatsApp group where each day when somebody more famous than the last one like kind of goes, I love normal people, is there like a a reaction from you guys with each other going, what the hell is happening? Yeah, there, there is. And like, there's there's like a big one with everyone involved. It's actually, it's really, it's really amazing. So it has like everyone who is involved in the making of the show and, um, and everyone puts in every day, the different people who've been, tweeting about it or said something about it and every day our minds are blown by someone else who's uh who's yeah who's who's done that so yeah but there is there's a, there's a big kind of pool of uh all the nice things that are being said which is really cool yeah a couple of days ago andrew lloyd weber uh tweeted paul looking for a sing-along which i think everyone is very eager to see so that would be great um but yeah we've it's been it's actually a bit disappointing though to kind of you know, the success and acclaim that the show's got that we're all stuck behind computer screens. Like, I'm really yeah. looking forward to meeting up with everyone and kind of, you know, having a good time. I know. Well, there's definitely going to be a cause for celebration. Oh, you mentioned Andrew Lloyd Webber there. I, I saw that, all right, because it seemed like Paul couldn't uh, believe that he had tweeted <laughs> yeah. him directly and just invited him to come and sing Phantom of the Opera. But <laughs> yeah. um, was there, for, for each of yourselves, was there a particular moment where it was like Toto we're not in Sligo anymore this is kind of it's got a great <laughs> Irish reaction uh and a great reaction uh across the UK then as well but then whenever you were like hold on what's what's happened was there a particular day or a moment where it was just like okay we're on we're actually on another level here now um actually before I saw the series I think there were quite a lot of people sent screeners and stuff in America and it was clear that the reception was really strong. And I think there was a few reviews and stuff. But then when I actually sat down to watch it myself, I think that was the moment where I was like, flip, this is actually class. Like, uh, and then it kind of just went from there. And, you know, just every day, there's just constantly good um, reception, yeah. which is just awesome. But I can't, there wasn't like a single person or anything like that where I was like, oh, it must be good if that person says, um, no, I think when you watch it, you're kind of just very proud and you realize what a great piece of work it is, I think, for me. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think for me, it was probably the day that it went up on um, BBC iPlayer because it just felt like the internet exploded when it went uh, up. And then, um, and then there was maybe a day or two between it going on Hulu as well. And then that just elevated to it to a different level. Um, I mean, like, I, I, I guess um, I maybe the moment where I was like, oh, my God, so many people are watching this was kind of based on the amount of people that were telling me they wanted me dead online it was maybe a good <laughs> indication of, uh, of how many people uh, were watching. But, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. We're all yeah, so thrilled. Um, you mentioned that there. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask about that because um, it's one thing to kind of laugh about it. Hey, it's a character, whatever. And I saw right. the very funny meme of like, if twenty twenty was a person, and then it's <laughs> and then it's a picture of you. Which, as we said, on one side is funny, but like for yourself sitting there, uh, I don't know where you're isolating or who you're with, like or whether you're uh, just on your own. And it's like, oh, okay, the internet <laughs> is really taken well to this character. Do you know what? It's funny because like, it's so funny where you draw the line of like, that's too far. Like, um, I mean, the, the upsetting thing about the of 2020 was a person was that's just a picture of me. Like, that's not a picture of the guy. <laughs> it was from picture. another event. <laughs> it's just a picture of me at an event. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that, um, I think that it's funny where you draw the line because obviously you're playing a character and, and, and to be honest, it's really thrilling for people to have that kind of response, whether it be love or hate, for them to feel that strongly is, is a really amazing um, thing. And like you said, Des and I are the polar opposites of that. Um, I think that, I think it was the one, so there was a tweet that was like, I mean, there were so many comparing Jamie to Joffrey, and then there was ones that were um, saying, 
like when we th- like just when you thought coronavirus was the worst thing about 2020 uh, there was Jamie from normal people uh, but I think maybe the one that I took the most offense to was they were like Jamie it was like I hate everything about Jamie down to his stupid f-ing sunglasses and they're my own prescription sunglasses <laughs> like I need like I need I need those sunglasses to see things like I literally need them to see things so that was I was like oh now I can't wear the I have to buy new sunglasses because people think that they're so uh, detestable. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's so I mean, people are so inventive on Twitter that like constantly. Um, but like I'm, I'm just constantly laughing at everything that people are running because they like they are extremely inventive and very funny. But um, but no, I, I haven't taken any of it uh, personally. For what it's worth, I liked your sunglasses anyway. So, so oh, thank you. There, there, so there is that. Um, what about yourself, Des? Because it, as as we said, it has been the polar opposite of people. Um, as we can tell, Fionn, you're actually lovely in in real life. Oh, thank you very um, much, Des. You're way much more of a dick than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> but but like, what what's it been like just seeing uh, the world kind of obviously fall in love with Paul, but then kind of fall in love with yourself as well? Everybody wants a, a token naughty best friend, right? Like, yeah, it's funny because Niall's had such a great reception and that he is so sound and he is so pleasant and stuff. But for me, I'm kind of like, if anyone's watching Niall's behavior and activities, you're kind of just like, that's just sort of the way you'd want to think you would act. Like, it's just normal. I don't think he's ex- doing anything exceptionally, you know, amazing. But it's also in contrast to probably the likes of Jamie and Alan that, like, perpetuates him further into being this real nice guy but like he's by no means like a saint he's just the kind of you know to me he's just he's just a nice sort of guy but it's nothing too extraordinary but um no it's it's awesome that he's been uh, received that way it was you know and it was it's so fun to play a character like that because if the character's meant to be having a nice time and you know having the crack then naturally I think you know I certainly was having that when performing it yeah, well, as you said, traveling to Italy or drinking cans around the table in Sligo, you know, it's a nice, uh, or sorry, in, in Dublin, it's a, it's a nice kind of gig to get. Um, in terms of the, the, the other side of the reaction to it, obviously, Liveline was um, hilarious or ridiculous, depending on, on kind of what way you, uh, you look at it. But that, that reaction to, obviously, the sex, the nudity, the intimacy of the, of the show, what were your, your own takes on that? Because um, I saw Lenny, uh, tweeted something brilliant where somebody had actually done a portrait of Joe Duffy with his head in his hands. Mm. Um, and, and this is now a very uh, proud thing, uh, or it's a, it's, it's a picture that Lenny's very proud to own now. But what was your own take on kind of the reaction? Because I think for a lot of people in Ireland as well, uh, <laughs> there's some more stuff coming up in the, in the kind of the final few episodes. Um, yeah, it was a bit disappointing, I thought, but, you know, everyone's kind of entitled to their opinion, I guess, and it's impossible to please everyone. Um, I think that was a much older, deeply rooted kind of viewpoint, which necessarily isn't really in line with modern Ireland. And, you know, it was a truthful depiction of a young sort of couple in romance and these things. This, this is the way of life now. And uh, I thought it was a bit disappointing, but, you know, we're certainly not here to tell people how to think or anything like that um so I didn't listen to it that much but um yeah it sounded quite comical at times but um I guess you have to appreciate where these sort of viewpoints are coming from I guess Uh, obviously your two characters have had a brilliant reaction um but in terms of the two leads Daisy and Paul who have kind of just gone stratospheric as well. Um, you know, I know you've talked about the first time you guys met, but what was it like meeting them and the experience of working with those? Because they just seem like lovely, wonderful, like kind of down to earth people as well. Uh, Des, what was your first experience of meeting Daisy and Paul? Yeah, well, it was at the read through. Um, and so I didn't really speak to them that much, but I remember there was certainly a sense that this whole project kind of rides on Paul and Daisy, you know, to be perfectly honest, it was a lot of pressure on their shoulders and uh, they're just two of the most remarkable people you'll ever meet. You know, what they brought to that project, you know, ignoring the performance, but everything around that in terms of their energy and their affability and how positive they were throughout the whole shoot, like they brought everyone up, I think. and they're just the nicest people. So much fun to work with, really generous. And uh, yeah, can't speak highly enough of both of them. 
yeah i i so the, the first time i met um the first time i met paul was at uh, actually one of the auditions we met each other in the like waiting room and then um i was i was like i, I was like oh like oh how's it, do you want to go for like a coffee afterwards and then i was like oh my god he thinks i'm so fucking weird and i was like why what, what i was like what am i doing so then i was like so then he was like yeah so i went to a coffee shop and i was sitting there and then i was like well how long do i wait before he like arrives or doesn't because arri- it's obviously way worse if he doesn't or if he arrives and i'm gone i was like but also i don't want to be here for like four and a half hours but uh anyway he came and we like met and it's funny because when i was talking to him for the first time i was like um i was like oh my god he's so perfect for this part and this was this was quite like this was maybe midway through the casting process and i was like he is so perfect and i said and i remember saying to him i was like you were 100 percent gonna get this part and then daisy i met at um i met in p max bar um just after one of their uh rehearsals and i was rehearsing for something else and we we met there um but yeah like des is saying like i i'm the exact same i couldn't speak um more highly of them and they're both so amazingly talented but also just such gorgeous uh people and i know we said that uh or des you mentioned that the, the kind of the, the show leaves the ending open and we'll see where it goes obviously uh sally rooney probably has a a fair uh, amount to say mm-hmm. in that as well but um, would both of you want to see uh, a series two? Uh, I know, I think one of the Kardashians or somebody was was calling for it anyway, and uh, it's just, it's bonkers to think that they're keeping up with normal people. But mm-hmm. um, is it something, Des, that maybe you would want to see happen? Um, you know, I, I, we've seen so many series in the past, you know, they maybe don't live up to the first season, for example, and stuff like that. So... At that expense, you know, you would really hate to see that happen. Now, obviously, there's nothing I would love more than to be part of a second season. That would just be the most incredible thing ever, or even for it to happen. But, you know, I I would hate that the great work that has been done, you know, it would be a shame to see it not live up to that standard. Um, So I I have no idea, but... um, You know, I think a lot of it will come down to Sally, but I'm sure she's aware of that as well as with the creators and stuff. But, you know, it feels like it was just so good. It would be a shame not to, but, you know, it was left so nicely as well. So it it could work either way and I would be fine either way, I think. Yeah, I I think I'd, I'd, I'd I'd love to see... Uh, a second one I don't think I have any chance of being in the second one I think I burn every bridge imaginable but I uh, but I'd love to watch it just because I think um you know I, I like I when I watch the show I can just watch it as an absolute fan of of it and um and and I think I, as a fan I'd love to see more and I think there's such an appetite for more but I think like Des is saying I think that'll um uh, come down to I don't think anyone would 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 make it without knowing that it's gonna um mm. you know match the same standards as the first and I think um yeah but I'd like I'd love to see one because I think for everyone there's such an appetite for more of it because the first one uh is so good but uh yeah yeah well no you always need to bring the villain back especially with the sunglasses yeah, yeah no you need, well, I you did, need that I, moment I, I, I did see a tweet that was like, I hope series two is every character kicking the shit out of Jamie from normal people. Uh, so to be honest, like, I I think, like I'm on board and uh, and I think most of the other cast are on board, which uh, which would be great. Okay, so that's that's an official thumbs up to that then. Um, no, that's, that's brilliant. As you said, you're probably all dying to meet up and just give each other, I don't know, a big hug and... Uh, just to actually see each other and congratulate uh, each other. Are there? Are you already making plans for you both like to get together and go as soon as we're allowed out? Um, we're all meeting up to to say hello. I'm gonna try to get all these celebrity phone numbers off Paul and Daisy <laughs> and uh, work my way into the. Uh, no, no, yeah, no. Of course, we're uh, we're really really excited to meet up. Um, yeah, and probably because we went so much time without seeing each other and stuff. I think when we do meet up, it'll be even even better. Hopefully. Yeah, I think so. I th- I think so too. I think like it's nice for you know everyone is talking about that that they just can't wait for us all to be able to celebrate, um, 
together and and see each other and hug each other whenever that might be uh, appropriate. Uh, but um, but yeah, no, we can't we can, we can't wait to to do that. But I guess we don't know how long that's even going to be, which mm. is kind of scary. Um, Des, you mentioned all those uh, celebrity phone numbers because on one hand, uh, like whatever people are into themselves, but you've got Niall Horn declaring his love for Daisy directly, yeah. which uh, <laughs> she's probably alienated about half the world's population there. There's and only then, one uh, Niall in Daisy's life. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no. That's a good thing because like, if you Google uh, or if you take a look for normal people and Niall, all you get are like reams and reams of Niall Horn, how much he loves the show, and then all yeah. his fans reacting to that. Like so, uh, but no, as you said, there's only there's only one uh, Niall in Daisy's life. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it's it's very funny to see. Um, uh, yeah, those people getting in touch with mm -hmm. uh, with everybody directly. Um, in terms of uh, second season aside. Uh, Fiona, I'll start with you in terms of what's next. The trailer for Dating Amber. Uh, I know we've been talking about it at work and tweeting it out uh, from Not the sure. show's account and Joe's account. It. it just looks so funny. And I know uh, Lily Pettigrew was brilliant in um, A Bump Along the Way as well, which uh, is obviously a, a film that was uh, made up in Derry. So I'm very mm. uh, proud, just as a Derry native, to, of that film. So very yeah. excited to see the two of you. Uh, oh, and then what, you. what can you tell us about Dating Amber? Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much, and thank you for posting it. So we're actually isolating together, but uh, so, oh, so I'll pass I'll pass that on. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I will. I'll pass that on to her. But um, uh, so, D dating Amber is um, is a coming of age comedy drama um, set in the nineties in Kildare about two teenagers who start a fake relationship to um, hide uh, their sexuality. Um, so, uh, what can you expect from it? Um, it's a it's a love story about friendship, and uh, I think I think it's really funny and really heartwarming and heartbreaking and at times and um, yeah I hope people really like it. Like the trailer dropped uh, last Thursday Friday, and and people seem to uh, really uh, love it. So yeah, I just hope that people go and watch it on June fourth on Amazon Prime. <laughs> nice plug. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> and what about yourself, Des? What have you got coming up next? Uh, no, I've had a lot of cancellations here via theatre. Um, so I was supposed to be working up until October, basically, in the theatre with three different projects, and they've all been scrapped. Um, so at the minute, I'm just trying to find my next project. Uh, my brother made a film there recently, um, which was supposed to premiere at the Belfast Film Festival called Black Medicine. Um, but obviously it didn't happen either. So, um, yeah, I'm not too sure what's up next. Oh, well, I'm sure you'd be uh, inundated with offers anyway uh, on the next days of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Like, they'll get you over 100%. <laughs> um, no, no, that's uh, absolutely super. Um, in terms of, uh, apart from normal people, because as we said, the, the whole world is talking about it, and the fact that, like, Paul was, like, the most searched person on the internet, like, ahead of people like Trump and stuff is mm. insane. But um, actually, did you text him about that? Because like I didn't hear that until the like James Corden show that that was an actual fact, which is uh, bonkers. Yeah, I don't think anyone. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I I certainly didn't know. Yeah, he didn't know. I don't think anyone had. See, I mean, that's mad. Like that shows you. Uh, well, it's not mad. I mean, he deserves every bit of it because he's brilliant. But but it's 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 mad to think that that many people are. Because obviously, when you make it, you never think of that. You're just making it so yeah it's completely surreal um yeah um but no what i was going to say is there anything else that you guys have been apart from normal people what's your favorite thing that you've watched or discovered kind of in in lockdown i a couple of days ago watched the passion of the joan of arc which is a silent film now i'd only really watched like buster keaton or charlie chaplin um for silent films but this is very serious and I've never seen anything like it. It was one of the best things I've ever watched, one of the best performances I've ever seen. Um, so I'm really happy I discovered that. Um, and I'm re-watching Breaking Bad, which is always a delight. Um, I'm, uh, I'm watching, well, I was going back and watching lots of kind of like my favorite films that I maybe hadn't seen in a, in a while. So I think maybe most recently I watched uh, 
Dog Day Afternoon was one that I watched that I really love and um, that I think is, is incredible. And then I was also, re I'm doing a lot of re-watching. I was re-watching Succession as well, again. I think that that's brilliant. Um, I actually think, uh, have, you, have you seen Succession? I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually thought Jamie fit quite nicely into the world. He was would... quite Roman Roy. He would be a, a perfect addition, like because obviously Brian Cox's character has got um, Celtic roots from Scotland, so mm-hmm. you can definitely see. I don't know how your Scottish accent is, but you could definitely see a cousin come from overseas who's got a stake in the family. Yeah, well, yeah. Here's here's our thing, but yeah. So I've been watching that, and then I watched um, I watched Boys Don't Cry recently as well, the Hilary Swank uh, uh, film. She's uh, phenomenal, but um, but yeah, that's that's all there. And Tiger King, obviously. Mm. Of course. What else have of you course. discovered, Owen? Um, well, those ones, essentially, um, I'm sticking with Succession Season 2 has actually been, uh, that's something to look forward to. Uh, I'm actually going to rewatch that as well, just because it's, I think it's absolute perfection uh, as well. Yeah. And then been watching a lot of uh, Killing Eve. Um, because the first series was just phenomenal. I think Jodie Comer is just, mm. uh, she's on another yeah. level as well. Um, so yeah, no, they've been the two kind of standout for me recently. And I'm a massive Star Wars fan, so I'm hoping to catch mm. up on The Mandalorian um, as well and kind of binge through all of Disney Plus, marvel mm. and, and the whole lot. Um, I'm going to love you and leave you because I've been chatting to you for, for so long. And thank you so much for, for taking the time to no, chat. thank you. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's been fascinating listening to, to the pair of you. Before we go, um, Desmond, any tips on just how to be sound in general in life, seeing as you're the expert? Uh, life, you live it up and you drink it down. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, as uh, Bernie Glassman said. Funny on the big review ski, uh, Jeff Bridges wrote a book with Bernie Glassman. Uh, it's called The Dude and the Zen Master. Yeah. It's all about how the dude um, has this Zen way of life, but it's a really good read. But uh, on the topic name of your show, check that out. 100% will. And Jamie, uh, any tips for just being an absolute prick in life? Oh, I don't know. Like, I think like maybe a good way, well, for, from his point of view, maybe a good way to live is fuck everyone. Uh, <laughs> fuck absolutely everyone. That's perfect. Yeah, no, uh, that's that's something we can all live by as well. No, those are those are great. Lads, uh, again, thank you so much. Yes, look after yourselves. And sure, we might get to do a chat in person someday uh, down the line as well. Oh, I hope so. Thank you so much for chatting to us. <laughs> I love you too.